everybody. Hello. Can everyone in the far reaches of the globe hear and see me? Hello. Everyone good? All right. There, we'll center ourselves a little bit on that camera. My name is Michael Hepner, as Elise said, and I run a company called GK Training and Communications based here in New York City. The G and the K stands for genuine know-how because that's what we strive to give people, which is know-how, actual technical skills, and the ability to come across genuinely no matter what situation. So we focus on communication. Basically, we help people talk good and stuff. And I want to start off with a story. And the story goes like this. A few years ago, a sociology scholar, someone who had just gotten their master's, or their, sorry, their PhD in sociology, approached us and said, I am not doing well in interviews. I get the same feedback all the time. People say, eh, she comes across as too junior. She doesn't have the experience or the authority. And she was pretty distraught. She was actually talking about changing her focus entirely, going back to school, switching careers. And I said, okay, that's fine. You can think about those things. But before you do that, I want you to try three things. First, I want you to drop the sound of your voice out of the mask of your face and try to speak in a more resonant place down in your chest. I want you to slow down. And I want you to remove the word like from your vocabulary. Six months later, she had a job in the field in which she wanted. Now, I'm not going to say that it's all due to us, not at all. But what I am saying is it is due to some changes she made. What are those changes? What did she change? Did she change her CV or her background or her educational record one little bit? No. In the far-flung parts of the world, you're going to shake your heads no as well? <laughs> Everyone across, across the globe? No, what, what had she changed? Slowing down her voice, yeah. What what would you call that? I, uh, speaking more in like a like melody tone. Sure, sure. Okay, so she had some more variety, perhaps. If you had to sum it up in one thing, what would you all call that? She changed her what? Communication. She changed her communication <laughs> skills. Exactly right. She improved her presence. Is another way we would talk about that. So everything I speak about today is about the impression that we form on others. And today, this is not going to just be me speaking to you. This is a conversation, a conversation with admittedly offices around the world, different places, but a conversation nonetheless. And I want your involvement in that conversation. And to reinforce that, I'm going to ask us all to do something, which is I would like you all to stand up around the world. Yeah, good. Well done, everyone. I'd like you to raise your right hand. I'd like you to take a vow with me. And the vow is as follows. I promise to be physically present today. You ready? And go ahead. I promise to be physically present today. Beautiful. Well done. We're going to do this one more time, but this time on the word present, I want you to take two small steps forward. I will demonstrate. I promise to be physically present today. Are you ready? One, two, three, everyone go. I promise to be physically present today. Well, then you can all sit down. Across the world, you can sit down. <laughs> Any guesses as to why I had us do that seemingly very silly physical drill? Helps Any guesses? Slow down. What? Helps you slow down. Oh, it helps you slow down. Okay. Any other guesses? Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of people are so preoccupied with their, their inside self that they forget their surroundings. They don't, they don't live in the present, the here and now. Interesting. So <clears throat> being present, the root of the word executive presence. You hear that buzzword thrown around a lot these days, don't you? Professional presence, executive presence, the root of that word is present. Meaning we're all alive right now, right here in the present moment around the globe. Executive presence. Why else would I have us be physically involved today? You're nodding like crazy. I want to hear, what, what's your thought? Reinforces our engagement in your like, communication presentation. Sure. So more, more present. To yeah, more involved, more physically engaged. For sure. There's one other reason, too. So if I click that up there, make it physical. Everyone around the world nod if you can see the slide. Everyone nod. <laughs> Good job. Well done, everybody. Make it physical. Part of this is the following. Your voice is your body. I'm going to say this two different times. Your voice, three actually. Your voice is your body. You ready? Your voice is your body. Third time. Your voice is your body. Communication, oral communication, is a physical art. We are not pieces of white paper. We're not text messages. We're not Facebook status updates. 
We are walking, talking, living, breathing communication instruments. The more physically engaged you are, the more powerful you are as a communicator. Let me demonstrate this in a different way as well. Does anyone know what this is? And for those of you around the world, you're just going to have to take, and I'll try to put it against my jacket so it's a dark background. There we go. You're just going to have to take my word for this. Anyone in the room, what is this thing right here? Tuning fork. Tuning fork. You guys are great. I'm going to hit this on my finger, and I want you to tell me when it is louder, when it's vibrating in the air or when it's making contact with something. You ready? Can you hear it now? Or louder? Which? Okay. When was it louder? Exactly yeah. right. Let's try a different one too. How about now? <coughs> louder? Which? Which is louder? Exactly. Why was it louder when it's in contact with some sort of object? Anybody? Yeah. It resonates. It resonates. Exactly right. The point here is this. This right here is your vocal cords. That's your vocal cords. This table, or that stereo console, computer console, is your body. The more physically engaged you are, the better your voice, the stronger your voice. We think our voice lives here. It doesn't. Our voice actually lives here. So the first part of today, if we're talking about oral communication, is I want you physically involved because your voice is your body. Why else? Why would I have a picture of a kid on a bike in front of the words, make it physical? Why else do I want you physically engaged today that has to do with riding a bicycle? Focus. Focus? Sure. Anyone heard the phrase, it's like riding a bicycle? What? Memory. 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 Exactly right. Muscle memory. I want you physically engaged today because I want you to remember these things. And our body remembers much better than our brain does. It's like riding a bicycle. Do you remember? The reason I want you to remember is because these things are important. As a grand total of 100%, I want you to guess how much of the impression that we form on other people is made up of the following three components. The words that we use, so the actual words we say, the power of our voice, our vocal presence, and our physical or nonverbal communication. You all might have seen statistics like this before. Let's hear a guess. The words that you use, what percentage of the impression we form on others is those actual, are those actual words? Guess. 10%. 10%. Pretty darn close. 7%. How about the sound and power of our voice, our vocal presence? Who's got a guess? 20. 20, 38%, pretty good. And the final one is 55. By the way, this stat is often misquoted. This is not to say that the words that you use are not important. They are, of course. It's a message that you're carrying to the listeners you have around the world. But look how important how you say those words are. Let's use a different example, actually, a more real world example. Who won this debate? This is the first debate between Mitt Romney and President Obama three years ago. Who won this debate by most people's assessment? Who? Romney, Romney exactly. Why? You guys remember? It was three years ago. I know that our, our memory fades in this media day and age. Everyone's already forgotten that. Do you remember? Obama was doing something the entire time. He kept looking where? Down. Exactly right. His delivery was poor. How about a different example? Hillary Clinton came back to defeat President Obama in the New Hampshire primary in 2008, and the speech she gave, the victory speech, she said the following words, I found my own voice. I found my own voice. There we go. How about another example? Ronald Reagan was known as the great what? The great communicator. So we're talking about communication, but what is good communication? Well, there's a few surprises I want to talk to you about. The first is it comes from using more of ourselves, not less. What do I mean by that? Who, in your all opinion, around the world and here, who are the best communicators in the world? Who are the world's best communicators? Kids. Kids! First guess, well done. Well done. Kids use a massive amount of themselves. Who has, raise your hand if you've lost an argument to a three-year-old. Go ahead. Around the world, raise your hands. Everybody raise your hands or else you're lying, I'm guessing. <laughs> Kids use a massive amount of their communication instrument. Ever negotiated with a kid for a bedtime? They use everything. And yet, as we get older, we use less and less and less and less of ourselves. So good communi communication comes from using a lot of ourselves, not a little. There can be a trap about executive presence, and it means one thing. It means grounding your feet 
and speaking in a low, even voice with steady eye contact the entire time. But even that, if you do it over and over and over again, tends to get a little bit boring or a little bit aggressive or a little bit assertive. Variation, using a lot of ourselves, is the first surprising thing about good communication. How about this woman right here? This doesn't feel natural. I work with executives all the time, and if I ask them to be a little bit bigger or a little bit more varied in how they communicate, they inevitably say to me, hey, Michael, that's just not me. That doesn't feel natural. And most of the time, they're standing like this poor woman right here. And I ask them, I say, was your spine always like that your entire life? Was, was that natural? Most of the time, it came from sitting in this all day long. So today, I want to invite you to have a larger sense of who you are. I want you to stretch the size of who you are as communicators. What's the second surprise? It comes from being more focused on the other person. What do I mean by that? Frank Sinatra, people would say after they left a concert of his that he was singing my way just to me in an amphitheater full of thousands of people. Bill Clinton, when he leaves a room, people say, he made me feel like I was the only what? The only person in the room, exactly right. Now, by the way, I will reference political examples from both sides of the aisle. It's not my business what your politics are, but I reference it because we all see these people all the time. We all see them so we can, can reference them and can relate to that. Com good communication comes from being more focused on the other person, not ourselves. And to reinforce this, I want us to do the following thing. I would like you to turn to the people around you in a moment. I would like you to shake their hand, and I would like you to say the following phrase. The more I invest in you, the better for me. Are you ready? One, two, three, go ahead, shake hands. More I invest in you, the better for me. Thank you. The more I invest in you, the better for me. Well done. Good job, everybody. Charlie, is it fair to say that that mantra might fit in here well? <laughs> and the third surprising thing about good communication is that you do not need to feel blank in order to project blank. Anyone in the room or around the world, fill in that word for me. What word might I be talking about there? Or one of them anyway. Go ahead. You don't need to feel what? Confident. Bingo. You do not need to feel confident in order to project confidence. What do I mean by that? I want you to think about three words. Three gerunds, actually. Thinking, feeling, and doing. One of these three things you have a tremendous amount of control over. The other two, not as much. In a moment, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to shout out which of these three things you think you have a lot of control over. Are you ready? One, two, three. Doing. 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 Pretty much in New York, and I'm guessing around the world, mostly the right answer, doing. Let's examine this for a second. If I tell you all, around the world, everyone, do not... I repeat, do not think about a yellow sunflower. Were you successful at that? No. no. If you were, I congratulate you on enlightenment. You can go off to Tibet, all of you, right now. I will stay here and learn more about communication. How about feelings? If I say to you, don't be nervous, don't be nervous. Just don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't be stressed. Don't be stressed. Don't be stressed. Don't be, stressed. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. Are those instructions helpful? No. No. no, not so much. Even when we're telling ourselves those things, don't be stressed, don't be stressed, don't be stressed. Don't be nervous, calm down, calm down, calm down. Hard to control our feelings, but how about doing? If I ask everyone in this room and everyone around the world to raise your right hand one time and put it down, could you do that? Yeah. yeah. If you weren't annoyed with me by the audience participation at this point, you could do that around the world. Our point today is we want to give you things that you can do to come across as communicators better. Which brings us to the golden rule of today. Focus on something you can do rather than on your own doubts, concerns, or negative thoughts. And we're going to offer you three different places. Your vocal presence, the other person, meaning the audience, and your physical presence. We're going to touch just on one of these later today because this is a very condensed period of time. It's really just a, a, a beginning step in you all becoming much, much better communicators. But when we say this, verbal presence, the primary thing we're going to talk about is your breath. When we speak about the other person, that's surprise number two of good communication. 
comes from being more focused on the other person, or your audience, in this case. And number three, your physical presence, or your body language. So let's talk about five good rules that go along with the golden rule. They are as follows. Warm up, practice ratio, transparency, variety, and make it physical. What on earth do I mean by these? Let's start with warm up. Why warm up? What is the least healthy thing that we all do all day long? Sit, sit. sit. Exactly right. Sit in these things right here. So I have good news for you. Today in the session, you don't, you don't have to sit all day long. You get to stand up, which I'm going to lead us now in a warm-up, a very brief one around the world. So if I can ask you all to come back up on your feet for a moment, and I am going to lead this. So please stretch up on your tiptoes, reach up towards the ceiling. Good, if a yawn happens because it's only 9 or 10, 15 in the morning, that's just fine, I yawn my head And come down on your heels, stretch your arms wide. If you bump into your neighbor, that's good. You can pat your neighbor on the shoulder and say, hello neighbor, there you go, hello neighbor. Imagine you're holding the world's biggest beach ball. All right, the biggest beach ball in the world, mush your face around, open your face up like you're in yoga class. I know you all do yoga, or many of you do anyway. And now come in small, curl in tight like a little hedgehog. And I want you to say, Meryl Streep did this too. Go ahead. Meryl Streep did this too. When she was at the Yale School of Drama. Go ahead. At the Yale School of Drama. And now open up wide and say, so did Denzel Washington. So did Denzel Washington. Good. Drop your arms to your side. Twist very gently. Let your arms twist a little bit. Raise your hand. So we have a cell phone mishap. Do you want to turn that off? Is it? Oh, no, no. Yeah? Okay, save the battery. <laughs> Raise your hand if you feel slightly better than you did a minute and a half ago. You can sit back down. New rule for you all to take away from today, which is this. If it's worth doing well in a communication situation, it is worth warming up. I work with executives all the time who go into a big meeting, go into a high stakes meeting, and all they have done is furiously scribble down their notes or think in their head what they're going to say. And yet, as we've already established, we are communication instruments. Their ability to perform in those situations is directly tied to how physically ready to, ready to go they are. Warming up though is not just your body, by the way. It's also, this is part of your body, Ooh, excuse me. This right here is part of your body. So together, we're going to practice this as well. On the count of three, I would like us all to say these words together. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. The big black bug bit the big black bear, and the big black bear bled blue black blood. Really good. Next one. Are you ready? <laughs> one, two, three. Whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we want to or not. Whether the weather be hot or whether the weather be cold, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we're young or we're old. Well done. If you have, what'd you say? Yeah, right there, front and back, whether the, on both sides of it. If you think you have a tendency to speak very quickly or to say lots of ums, I promise you it is more effective to warm your mouth and your body up before communicating than it is to say, just sound better today, sound better today, speak more clearly today, speak more clearly, don't say um, don't say um. Your body is a far better place to put your faith. So that's the first of the good but not golden rules. Let's say you say to yourself, yeah, but I don't know how to do a warm up. Never fear, go to our website, go to training resources, create an account, and you'll be taken through guided warm ups. Let's say you don't want to do that, you don't have an internet connection, that's just fine. Any warm up you've ever done for any athletic event, works as long as it involves this portion of your body and you're breathing while you do it. Mush your face around. I would take even 30 seconds of warming up over three hours of telling yourself that you should warm up. What is the second good but not golden rule? That is practice ratio. This gets back to my same point about the executive. Calls me up, says, hey Michael, listen, I have a big speech coming up tomorrow. Can we meet? I'm scared. I say, sure, we meet. I say, have you practiced this? And they say, yes, here are my notes. Do you think they've said a single word on this page out loud even once? Many of the times. What do you guys think? No. New ratio for you, and that's this. 
50-50. If you want to do well in a communication situation, 50% of your time should be spent actually saying the words out loud. The third good but not golden rule is transparency. What do I mean by transparency? If I was going to give this talk today, and I walk over here to make some brilliant point on the whiteboard, and I begin to write on it, and the marker does not work. Is it better to say, uh, 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 and hide the marker, or is it better to say, huh, this marker doesn't work, let me try a different one. Is A better or B? B. B. If I get a second marker, and this second marker doesn't work either, is it better to say, uh, I, uh, 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 or is it better to say, wow, this marker doesn't work either, Charlie, we need a new marker budget. <laughs> Which is better, A or B? Budget. B. Depending on what Charlie says, maybe B is better, maybe. This is basically a piece of technology. It's a primitive piece of technology. It's a filament soaked in ink. You press the filament against paper, and ink comes out. This is also a piece of technology. PowerPoint is a piece of technology. This is pretty primitive. PowerPoint is kind of primitive, too, depending on when you're using it. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have ever been failed by technology. Everybody around the world, raise your hands, because I know you all have been failed. Guess who else has been failed by technology? Any audience you talk to ever in the world. If you are transparent, you have done something very powerful, which is you have engaged your audience's empathy. You've also, back to your point about being present, you've also let them know that you're alive in this present moment, right now. The marker didn't work, you saw it didn't work, I saw it didn't work, deal with it and move on. So that is the third good but not golden rule. The fourth is variety. The longer I am in this field, the more I'm convinced that variety is one of the single most powerful things you have as a communicator. What are the components of variety? This goes back to our first, our first surprise, comes from using more of ourselves, not less. What are the components of vocal variety? Pace, pause, pitch, and power. What is pace? Speed, exactly. Pause, that's pretty self-evident. What is pitch? Any musicians out there, what does pitch mean? Yeah, exactly. How high up here and also down, how low down here. We make these four P's so it's easy to remember. And how about power? What is power? Another word for what? Wow. Loud, exactly right. Volume or not volume. You don't have to remember those four things, though, because guess what? We do these things naturally all the time. And to prove this point, can I have a volunteer who has kids? Let's say kids that are four years old or younger. Way back there, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Give her a hand. Exactly. Right. Did you have a cell phone? Or a smartphone with you? Good. All right. I just imagine that it's going to be very intense. I want you to imagine that I am your. How old is your child? They're going to be four. I want you to imagine that I am your four-year-old kid. Okay. And I am at a playground, and I have found some poor, unsuspecting parent's cell phone. And I'm having a great time with it. I'm pouring sand on it. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can't hear you. Another, but sure. That. All right. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're back. Oh, good <laughs> job. Give her a hand around the world, please. Good. Well done. The drill is as follows. I am her four-year-old child. We're at the playground. I am pouring sand all over some poor parent's cellular phone. And because you're such a good parent, you are going to get me, your four-year-old kid, more interested in this little wiffle ball right here, this harmless wiffle ball, than this parent's cell phone. And you're going to do that using only those words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those eight words, you're only going to say those eight words. You're going to get me more interested in this wiffle ball than I am in this cell phone. Are you ready? Okay, go ahead. Miles, do you want this thing or that thing? Ah, what did she do? Here, give me the, give the phone back. What did she do? Give her a hand, first of all. Give her a hand a bit. You can sit back down. What did she do? She emphasized on the certain She emphasized. Exactly. She used all four of those things, didn't she? Pace, pause, pitch, and power to let Miles know that one thing was very, very good and one thing was really not good at all. We do this naturally. And by the way, great art does this too. Anyone know what this is from? What novel? What? Moby Dick! Perhaps the most famous American novel ever. This is the first four sentences of Moby Dick. 
Look at that sentence. Three words long. Call me Ishmael. Three words, and two of the words are monosyllabic. Call and me. Only three sentences later, Melville writes this monstrosity of a sentence that is all the way that long and includes words like methodically, deliberately, especially, hypos, principle. This sentence is more effective because of this sentence, and this sentence is more effective because of this sentence. So that is the fourth good but not golden rule is variety. And how about the fifth? Make it physical. I've already spoken about what make it physical means today. It means that your voice is your body, and also I want you to remember these things because I want you to have a muscle memory experience of working in a different way as a communicator. But there's a third thing that make it physical means. Some masking tape, some Legos, a wiffle ball, a piece of cork. Many, many people have communication habits that don't serve them necessarily. And one of the most effective ways to change that habit is by working physically, not by thinking about it. And I would like to demonstrate this in a couple different ways if you all are game for this. Now I know that Next Jump is a highly participatory company and people are <laughs> encouraged to improve constantly, so I know it will be very easy to get volunteers in this particular company. If you can relate to any of these things, please raise your hand. If you know that you speak very, very quickly, if you have a hard time jumping in at meetings, or if you tend to say the word um or uh a lot, any of those three things, please raise your hand. Wow, okay, <laughs> everyone, who wants to participate and get a little free coaching real time right this very second? Right here, okay, what, come on up here. Give her a hand first of all. Okay, and what is it, the thing that you know that you do at times? I speak quickly. Okay, great. Can you please talk to us a little bit around the world about who you are, what your role is, and what you have coming up in the next six months professionally? All right. You ready? Go ahead. So, my name is Emily, for anyone who doesn't know me. Um, I work on our customer loyalty team here in New York, and in the next six months, um, well, hopefully we'll have a zero queue again. Hopefully we'll be able to roll out a couple new features onto the site um, and just really reduce inbounds, you know. Good. Pause for a second. Just so we know, give me your assessment. Was that typical of how fast you speak? Slower? Faster? What do you think? Um, I, I try to, like, remind myself to speak slowly, uh -huh. so I don't know. I tend to, like, get nervous, then my breathing doesn't really work as well uh -huh. as you know, in yeah. a normal conversation, not in front of hundreds of people, so. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. First of all, give her a hand for going for it, by the way. I want you to try, if you don't mind, I want you to stay up here, actually. I want you to try two things. So this is just a roll of masking tape. Everyone can see what this is. I'm going to put this tape down the floor. I want you to do the following thing. I would like you to walk and talk at the same time. But I would like you to walk very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to match your words to the pace at which you're walking along this piece of masking tape. Speak about the exact same content. I want you to see how slowly you can walk along this piece of tape. And I want you to speak while you're doing it. Does so, that make sense? Yeah, so it's the same stuff like Same said. exact thing, yeah. Okay. But you're going to walk very, very slowly along this masking tape and match your words as you're doing that. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Emily. I work on the customer loyalty team. Good, beautiful. Now you don't have to parse the words quite so one by one. You can speak a little bit more fluidly, uh -huh. but I still want you to walk that slowly. Got it? Go okay. ahead. Forgot what I was talking about. You work on the customer loyalty team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can talk about more words in one step? Yeah, you can okay. continue with that, right, but I still want you to walk slowly. Okay, in the next six months, we will um, roll out new features to the site, decrease inbounds um, significantly, uh, that would be the hope, and then, um, I forgot what else I was saying, okay. but Good. we're doing stuff. Can I, ask you, <laughs> can I ask you to try a second drill for a second, do you mind? Yeah, so sure. So I want you to do one of two things. Here's some slices of cork. I want you either to put a piece of cork in between your teeth like that, or you can use your pinky finger. It's entirely up to you. Which do you prefer? I'll use the cork. Okay, good. So take, take a piece a of that cork. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the drill. I would like you to speak now, <laughs> say the same part about what you're working on, <laughs> but I would like you to 
make sure that every single word, and I'll face a camera so you can see around the world, make sure every single word is totally clear even though you have the piece of cork in between your teeth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Put it right in the center there. There you go. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Um, so I work on the customer loyalty team. <laughs> and in the one. next six months, we will decrease inbounds significantly and improve the site with new features that will do that. Beautiful. Pause. <laughs> Give her a hand. Yeah. You can take the cork out now, and you can sit back down. Good. Thank you. What did you guys notice about when she was speaking with a cork in her mouth? What? Slow down. What else did you notice? No ums. Exactly right. How about the sound of her voice? Stronger, richer, deeper, more resonant. Would you agree? Throwing out those words to fill in the blank because our time is short. Did I say any of those things to her though? Did I say have a stronger, richer, more resonant voice? Slow down. Don't say um. Did I say don't say um? No. Those things came along by simply using the activity of speaking more forcefully. If you have some habit, you speak too quickly, say lots of ums, you're not concise with your thoughts. If someone gives you that feedback, is that the first time you have ever heard that thought? No. People who speak very, very rapidly, how many times have they heard from someone, you talk really quickly, how many times? A lot. Countless, maybe. And guess who they hear that the most from? themselves. Practicing with a cork is going to be far more effective for you for slowing down and learning in a muscle memory sense how to hang on to that different pace. That is the principle of make it physical. All right, we have five more minutes and I want to leave some time for questions and answers. So I said earlier, we're going to give you three positive places to put your focus besides your own nerves, anxiety, don't mess up, and they are verbal presence, the other person, and physical presence. In a condensed period of time like this, we're just going to be able to address one of them. But I want to talk about verbal presence. And I want to speak about that specifically because her focus was ums and slowing down. From this day forward, let's see if you can get something out of 45 minutes of time together. From this day forward, when you're in a communication situation that matters, I would like it to be a small little Michael Chad Hefner in the back of your brain, and he's saying an acronym. And the acronym is as follows. Are you ready? RTB. RTB. Any guesses as to what that means? Or stands for? Anyone? Breathe. Remember to breathe. Exactly right. Our breath is our single most powerful communication tool. It is not an exaggeration to say that your breath is the fuel that drives your communication. But it's easy to say remember to breathe. You guys hear this all the time. In stress relief class, maybe a friend, just breathe, take a breath, calm down, take a breath. How do we actually breathe? I want you to imagine for a second that you're a little bunny rabbit caught in the headlights of a car, and I want you to put your hand on your chest and breathe in and out as quickly and as rapidly like that little bunny rabbit as you possibly can, caught in the headlights of the car. Are you ready? Breathe in and out really quick. Go, go, go. Okay, pause. Do you feel how that actually ramps up that anxiety or nervousness mechanism just a little bit? Let's experiment in a different way. Instead, I want you to put your hand on the small of your back. I want us to take three breaths in together, slowly and deeply, so that you can actually feel your rib cage expanding as it fills with that breath. Are you ready? Breathe in and out. And in, and out, and in, and out. Raise your hand if you feel slightly more centered, grounded, and relaxed than you did 30 seconds ago. Raise your hand if you also notice how the room, the energy in the room, feels slightly different than it did 30 seconds ago. I encourage you to breathe like this before important communication situations and during them. Our breath accomplishes that task that we keep telling ourselves to do. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Slow down, slow down. Don't be nervous, don't be nervous. The breath actually does those things to you. Let's experiment with this more though for a second. I want to make a demonstration of how little we tend to breathe. Are you ready? We're going to read this together. By the way, what's this from? 
Hamlet, good job. Moby Dick and Hamlet already. It's a great literature class at 10 a.m. in the morning. I want us to read this together, and every time you see a comma, I would like you to breathe in. All around the world. Are you ready? I'll get out of the way. And one, two, three. To be, to be. or not to be. to be. That is the that question. Is Whether tis noble or in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them. Beautiful, well done. Same exact text, but you might notice there are fewer commas. Same drill, you're going to breathe at the comma only. Are you ready? One, two, three. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether to no in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. And you might guess what's coming next. The last one, no commas. So you can imagine you might need to take in a little bit more breath to do this one. Are you ready? Around the world, one, two, three, breathe in. To be or not to be, be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them. Well done. If you are out of breath, that's an indication to you of how much more you could be breathing on a regular basis. We all hear this one statistic. How much of our brains do we use, supposedly? What's the statistic? 10%. I would offer that we are in the habit of using even less of our breath on a consistent basis. Let's practice this, though, in a more typical situation, given that you're probably all not speaking Hamlet on a regular basis. I want us all to speak this at the same time. We're going to speak through this three times. And the first time, I want you to take a small breath in and speak this line, and then a small breath in and speak this line. And because it got cut off at the end, let's just, that says, I'd like to hear from the other perspectives here. We're gonna do this all together, all around the world, three times. Are you ready? Let's go. I'd like, like to, to add, add something, something to this discussion. discussion. This, conversation this conversation is important, important and I wanna make, make sure, sure we're not missing anything. anything. I'd like That's to hear from the other perspectives, other perspectives here. here. Good, we'll do a second time. I want you to double the time that you're breathing in here. Double it. You ready? One, two, three. I'd like, I'd like to, to add, add something to this discussion. discussion. This, this conversation, conversation is important, important and I, I want to make sure we're not missing anything. anything. I'd like I'd to like hear like from the other from perspectives, perspectives here. By the way, when you're breathing, what can you not be doing? Speaking. And guess what? Many of us speak way too quickly and we talk way too much. Yours truly is guilty of that many times because I want to pack a lot of value into a short amount of time. Let's get to the end here for a second because in 45 minutes, it's hard to walk out of a situation and be a master of communicating. But you've seen a few things today and my biggest investment, no matter what you thought about this, that guy's wacky, he's crazy, he's not funny at all, I didn't laugh a single time, I'm still asleep, I'm not still asleep, I'm awake, whatever that is about me. The important part about this time is that you took away one thing, just one thing that you can experiment with and put into practice. So I would like you to think for a second. Maybe it was make it physical, maybe it was walking on some tape to slow down, maybe it's using a cork, maybe it's changing how you warm up, how you practice things, how much you practice things, maybe it's being transparent. Maybe it's one of the surprises I told you. Maybe it's remembering to breathe. But I would like you to think back from this 45 minutes together and identify one thing that you would like to experiment with. Then I would like you to take out your cell phone or your paper calendar or your brain if you keep all of your calendar in your brain, which I hope you don't, but maybe you do. And I would like you to choose some event, time, lunch date, anything at all in the next two weeks. And I would like you to write down a reminder to yourself, or program in a reminder, to practice that one thing. Are you ready? Go ahead, take out your cell phones, or your brains, if your calendar is in your brain, and choose one time to practice one of these things. I'll give you a second to do that.
I'm going to continue talking while you, it looks about half the room is done, so I'll continue speaking. Those who are not done, continue, that's just fine. I'm not sure if you can tell by this presentation or conversation this morning, but we love to communicate, and we love to communicate with people. This is a short amount of time. The great thing about social media is it's free. Don't just follow us or like us. Ask us a question. We're going to get a few questions in a moment, but if there's something that you're curious about or did not find out today or did not learn or want more information about, just ask us a question on Twitter or on Facebook. The handle's right there or right here. You can also text us at this number. If you want to, you can text your name and your email address and specifically when you're going to practice this. And we promise you, if you do that, we'll text you back and say, great idea. Here's a different suggestion. Try this as well. The point is, this is 45 minutes of time. This is the beginning of a conversation. And we hope you take from this at least one idea and begin to put it into practice to become even better communicators than you are right now. With that, let me pause and see if there are any questions. And then I'm going to take a short break so the next presenter slash conversationalist can come up here and speak a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. At least what you say. So I was just going to say, maybe we can take one question from each office, starting with Boston, and then we'll go to London and kind of end here in New York. So, Boston, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Hi, yes. Um, how do you communicate with someone who is closed off and not listening? That's a very good, very good <laughs> question. <laughs> well, it's... Without knowing who that person is or that situation, it's a little bit hard to answer. But in terms of the idea of countering energy, there's two. Either you could try to match them or you could try to undercut what they're doing. Meaning, if they're closed off and listening, you might have to bring up your energy and your variety, which was the second or sorry, first surprising thing about good communication. For instance, if I speak to you right now, if I speak to you right now in a very boring voice the entire time, no matter what I'm talking about, there's a good chance that I'll probably lose your attention, even though you're the person who asked the question. And as I continue to do that, you might notice that it's actually difficult to understand the meaning of what I'm saying because all the words blend together. So if the person is closed off, you, as a communicator, may have to work much, much harder to reach that person. You can think about it that actually it's not just their problem, it's your obligation to reach them in whatever way. Perhaps it's drawing them out. Perhaps it's getting them excited. Perhaps it's getting them engaged. If you think about it, that your obligation is reaching that audience, you might be more effective. <clears throat> does that answer your question a little bit? It does. Thank you. Yeah. Next office. Sure, you know it's much easier than me talking about that right now. We'll just send you something. So if you want to just give Elise your email address or just shoot us a text, social, thing, either Twitter or Facebook, we'll just send you something, and you can use that, actually. In fact, you can distribute that around Next Jump around the world if you want to, and we can create our organization and your organization competencies about what is effective communication. Next office. Okay. So that's going to be... Ah. Nobody. Yeah. So, uh, what happens uh, like when I'm speaking in front of it? Usually, because I try to uh, have an eye contact or something, it makes it very difficult to actually say what I'm thinking. Ah. Like, do you recommend doing something to that? Sure. Interesting. Now, this is a good point because, and I wish I had a close up on my uh, camera. We get this objection from a lot of people. They say, well, I don't want to stare at people. I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable with my eye contact. And if I actually make eye contact, I get distracted, which is basically what you're saying. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. In general, Americans err way too far on the side of not enough eye contact. I promise you, if each one of you get into a role play situation, sit in a room with someone else from Next Jump, practice some communication situation and film yourself, even just with a smartphone. This is not a smartphone, but you get my point. <laughs> with a clicker with a clicker film. And I promise you, you probably think I'm staring at them the whole time. And I bet you your eye contact is about 50-50. It should be closer to 85 or 90, believe it or not. What I would challenge you with is the following. 
If your thought really is, I get distracted about my message when I'm making eye contact with someone, you're not putting enough investment in reaching that person. No matter how compelling your message is, no matter how compelling what you are saying is, if your focus is still on you, okay, how do I sound, how's my message, is it making sense, and not on that person, you're not as effective as you could be. See if you can increase your interest and your fascination in that other person. How do they listen best? How do I need to modify this message for them? Can I make this more concise? Can I use variety to reach them more effectively? And do this, by the way, in low consequence situations. Practice at Starbucks, getting coffee, see how fascinated you can become with the barista across the aisle from you. Promise you will make more friends in life, but you will also become better as a communicator. All right, it's seven up, so I don't want to go into the other presenter's time. Any other questions, or should we keep it at that? Maybe we can one for keep office. it at that, one yeah. for office, and we can shoot you any additional questions if you send them to me, so yeah. thank you. Or you guys reach out, ask us a question, we'll get back to you, we promise. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> we're